Hi, investors. Nick Garner here from Investmore, and we're doing another area report. This time, it's a place called Liege. It's about 18 kilometers west of Manchester. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing we're going to look at with Lee is the location. Whenever I think about location, I always think in terms of proximity to places people want to be. And in this case, the place people probably want to be is Manchester and possibly Liverpool. So it sort of sits between the two and you've got Bolton as well. But a general rule with areas and locations is the closer the area is to where the work is, the better. And in this case, it's it's accessible to Manchester. It's about an hour's public transport commute. So if I open that up, we can see some of the different ways you can get around. Uh, it's around an hour. And if we look at the travel time map, this is the this is how far you can go in an hour from Manchester, from from Lee, should I say. And you can see here in an hour, you can get into central Manchester, which is good, and some of the, the, the west side of the city. You can't get to Liverpool in an hour. And that's kind of an issue because then you're restricted with the uh, potential locations that you could uh, get to easily. The other thing to look at is how people travel from Lee uh, to wherever they work. This map shows the method of travel to work by car or van. In other words, if you don't get to work that way, you're probably using public transport. And you can see, if you look at Manchester, for example, this whole inner city area is very pale, and that shows you that people are traveling to work by some other means other than their car. Further out you go, then the the more likely you are to use your own vehicle. And you can see here in Lee that there are large areas of the town where people are traveling. Now, my guess is that there's some kind of, uh, there's maybe employment in the town center. And then if you live further out, you would then, you would then travel by um, car or van. Or if you live further in, you're closer to the railway station and therefore it's easier for you to get in and out of the town. And again, if we look at that, you can see. So overall, from a location point of view, it's, it's okay. Uh, one of the other questions, of course, is are there... Is it a nice place? Are there nice amenities nearby? Are the, is there interesting green space, parkland, all that kind of stuff? And whilst you have the country park, which is, of course, a, a real asset, and it comes very close into the town, which is a good thing, I wouldn't say that this part of the world is especially interesting. And overall, I'm, on location, I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a three... No, I'm not. I'm going to give it a 2.5 because it's a little bit far out from from uh, m large areas or areas where there's a lot of employment. Now, the next question is demographics. And for that, I'm going to go back to Datashine. This is a really useful feature. And one of the questions is, of course, local economy. Like, are the people working? And the answer is that overall, it's an economically productive area. Now, if I zoom out and show you, say, Kirby, for example, you can see here that large proportions of the population aren't economically productive. Or if you look at, say, central Liverpool. So this is very important because we care that people are working because ultimately, as buy-to-let landlords, we want to rent out to people that can pay their rent on time. So firstly, yes, it's economically productive. So that's a positive thing. The other question is who lives there? And 
if you're familiar with social grading, the NRS social grading system, you'll know that we have social grades A down to E. And typically, it's the lower middle class who are the ones that are the renters. They don't have enough money to buy a property for themselves because maybe they can't save up their deposits. But they do have enough money to live comfortably, have a car, have some disposable income and pay rent on a property that is in a nice place. Now, what's interesting about Lee is that it's got a high proportion of C1s overall. And you can see um, you can see here that relatively speaking, uh, yeah, it's got a high proportion. So you see in this town here and this town here, plenty of C1s. And overall, what you'll see if you look at the greater Manchester story is how C1s tend to be living further out. So these are people who would rather have a little bit more, a little more space. Uh, they can tolerate a longer commute or maybe they're working more locally or whatever. But overall, we this fits in with the the overall story with Manchester, which is that C1s are living in this belt outside of the city centre. Therefore, demographically, I think it's very, very strong. And I'm going to give it a four on that because clearly Lee falls into a pattern which is uh, which, which fits C1s. And C1s are the people I think any uh, landlord should be interested in. Now, the next question is what crime. And in order to assess crime, I'm going to zoom in quite a lot. Now, for crime, what I've done is downloaded the all the crime data from Greater Manchester Police for a whole year long period. And unfortunately, we don't have data beyond June 1st, 2019. However, it, this is a good general indication of crime in the area. Now, the general rule with crime is look at crime on a very on a very localized basis, because if you generalize on it, then what happens is you say, oh, it's very high crime because maybe there's a lot of crime in the town center. But what about a quiet suburb? So in this case, there is a negligible amount of crime. One antisocial behavior crime, some vehicle crime, some antisocial behavior. This is as close as you can get to crime free. And when you see hotspots like this, it's probably because it's on a on an area where there's some shopping. There might be a petrol station here, something like that. And that's why you get that. But that that will have no influence on the quality of life for the people here. Now, just taking a very general view on it once again, you can see that uh, the crime is maybe maybe generally centered on the town center. Overall, this is a low crime place, and I'm going to give it a four on crime because it's quite far out. As I said, it, I, I'm seeing I'm seeing a general good story on crime. I think it's it's doing well. Now, a critical question is capital growth. In fact, this is almost like the deal make or break on a property. Certainly, if you follow the videos that I do and when I analyze deals based on capital growth, it's all in the capital growth because the net rental income on property is is not really that satisfactory. Therefore, let's just look at the look at the growth story here for frame of reference, as it were, the way I look at growth is I have numerous ways of benchmarking it, but one of my main ones is looking at capital growth over time, picking a benchmark moment and say looking at over the last 15 years. And, and really our benchmark moment is 2007 when properties were at their least affordable in recent history. Now, when I say recent history, I mean property was equivalent in terms of affordability uh, back in 1890s. And that was a very different world back then, a very different economy, very different everything, in fact. Therefore, if you look at capital growth 
from 2017, it gives you a good sense of whether property has gone up in real terms over that time. And then that shows you that's effectively a proxy um, metric to demonstrate economic strength, because ultimately property goes up when people with more cash than somebody else will bid up the price on the property and thus the property prices go up in real terms or not. And in this case, we have many areas in Manchester, for example, which have gone up in real inflation adjusted terms. And this is an important concept. And I talk about capital growth and inflation and all this kind of thing in other videos. But suffice to say that if you bought a property in 2007, sold it today, if you were buying a property in this area in Manchester, for example, you would be 23% richer in real terms. If you did the same thing in St. Helens, you would be 37% poorer in real terms. It's a very important concept and it's fundamental to good property investment. Now, the question is, what are we seeing in Lee? How's that all shaping up? And the answer is that in the long term, it is borderline. We've got a patch here. Um, this is when we look at uh, when we look at this kind of data, it's always going to be a bit variable. But overall, it's not too bad. In other words, long term capital growth has been unexceptional. Uh, but it's still a contender. In other words, if you had capital growth, say, in the minus 30s, this kind of thing here, I would be very cautious about assuming that you're going to get capital growth for the next 10 years in St. Helens, for example. And that's just simply because I don't have confidence in the local economy, because over the last 15 years, property hasn't been bid up, as it were, relatively speaking. Whereas in Lee, it's very near the mark. And the question is whether short term capital growth has been strong or not. Now, if it is strong, then this is good in a way because it shows that people want to live here and that there's headroom for growth. And if we think about the whole notion of people moving further out to get more space, cheaper accommodation, etc., then if Lee is one of those attractive locations for people, then the price goes up. So let's have a look and just see what's been going on. Now, the data for for the uh, for the long term stuff has come from the Office of National Statistics via land register land registry, then Office of National Statistics. Then I've analyzed it and added my layer of stuff onto it. And in the long term, not so good. But in the shorter term, the last five years, this area has actually improved somewhat. But overall, you can say that Lee has been strong, very strong, in fact, relatively speaking, over the last five years. And we can see on the postcode district data that that's also the case. The next question is, what about the short term growth? And the answer is that it's also been fairly strong. So the question is whether this is long term safe capital growth. You, you can have areas, for example, like Blackpool, which in the long term have done terribly on capital growth. But in the short term, there's been a lot of interest or there certainly was. And we can see here 8% growth short term. And, and we can see 4% short term on Randley. I think Lee is reasonably strong. I don't think it's the safest bet because ultimately in a downturn, the areas that do best are those few places where it's such a compelling case to live there that you will bid people who can afford to will bid up the price. And therefore, I would say on capital growth, it's going to get a 3.5. Now on sell time and rent time, then uh, let's have a look at that. Now to go in there, we're going to just change some of the data. So I'm going to show you this layer. Turnover on rental is healthy. Now, uh, just to explain, 65% means that 65% of stock that goes on rent, uh, goes, goes out to rent 
gets rented each month. And that's actually pretty good. The sales turnover is relatively low. And what that tells me is that the market isn't especially hot there. And from a balanced kind of capital growth competition, etc., point of view, my, my opinion is that with 7% of stock being sold per month, that is 7% of stock listed sold per month, that it, it should be relatively easy compared to other areas to get a look in and to get hold of good rentable properties. The question is, will the capital growth make the whole thing viable? Now, we'll find out a little bit more later when we look at the yields and whether those work. But from a sales and rental turnover, so let's talk about sell turnover. I think this is a 3.5. In other words, you've got access to the market. It's not, it's not too hot and certainly it's not too cold. If it's too cold, it's somewhere around the 2-3% turnover per month. And for that reason... Um, for that reason, I think that uh, it's good. All right. Now, the next thing is rent turnover. On rent turnover, I think it's ex it's very healthy. I don't think it's blisteringly hot, but I think it's very solid. And I'm going to give it a 3.5 on that. Now, the final question is, what about the yield? And to do that, we're going to go, we're going to zoom in and look at some examples and just see what the numbers shape up at. Now, for that, I'm going to run this properties LSOA thing. So this layer, this shows us properties that we have identified on this segment here, on this uh, area. We get this property, we get this data from propertydata.co.uk. It's really useful if you're doing general analysis. And I can see off the bat, if we look at that, that is a, what is that? That's a terraced house. So everything pink is terraced houses. These are our favorite type of property because they tend to attract, they tend to attract families and people who just want to stick around. The issue with apartments is you often get couples who are just in in transit, as it were, and therefore you get more void periods. But two bedroom terraced houses are excellent. And these yields are very, very strong. And I and overall, when I think about whether it's a safe yield or a risky yield, and I think about the demographics of this area, that it's got a lot of C1s. It's got good local amenities. You can see here, it's got a gigantic Sainsbury's. And also you've got a huge Tesco's here. So this is obviously a an important center for the whole sub-region, as it were. And across the board, I'm seeing extremely strong yields. I'm confident based on this and based on the property turnover figures, that one could get some very good property here that has a serious chance of achieving very solid capital growth over the next five to ten years. For that reason, I'm going to give it a four on yield because it those yields are very strong. And I think they're they're the right kind of yield, i.e. low voids, sensible tenants, uh, low hassle for you as a landlord. So let's give this a score and see what happens. So it's a four. So 3.6. How does that rank across the board? That ties in with Withington. That's interesting. Now, the question is, could I go higher on any of these? Um, I think maybe higher on location. You know what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to go up a little bit. All right. I think that that feels about right to me. I think Lee is a really interesting area. It it works because it's kind of further out. There's less competition for property. Yields are very strong. Demographic is very good. Capital growth promises to be reasonably good over the next 10 years. I don't know whether it'll outpace inflation, but it'll certainly... I think it'll certainly have a very good chance of doing so. And um, overall, I think it deserves its very high score. 
Well, I hope you found that useful. If you like, please like. It always helps. And if you want to see more of this, please subscribe. And until next time, good investing.